Hello there, my name is Janet Brindley. My background is in biochemistry and I've worked as a medical researcher at the Royal London Hospital in Barts. Since 2003, I've been part of a small team running a once a year, three day Buteco teacher training course for health professionals. Over that time, we've trained over 300 people, mostly physiotherapists and nurses, to teach the Buteco techniques to people with breathing problems. In the light of the COVID problem, we're working hard to produce an online training course, so watch this space. Firstly, a brief overview of Buteco. Buteco is a self-management programme which helps patients to manage all aspects of dysfunctional breathing. This includes poor breathing patterns, hyperventilation and breathlessness. Our experience is that dysfunctional breathing or poor breathing may be associated with many conditions, including asthma, persistent coughing, anxiety, or post-COVID breathlessness. The programme generally takes around five weeks, with the patients needing to practice for around an hour a day. But many of the techniques can be integrated into normal life, so it isn't as bad as it sounds. It only works though if people practice. And the most difficult thing is motivating people to keep up their practice. People can follow the programme by themselves, but they tend to do much better if a nurse or physio is monitoring their progress weekly and correcting mistakes. The closest analogies, I think, are learning to swim or to ride a bike. And like swimming and riding a bike, you don't need to practice forever. Once people have learnt Buteco, they have a sort of muscle memory. They may become a little rusty, but they don't forget. Incidentally, swimming is a great way for people to improve their breathing. The two main features of the programme are correcting breathing pattern. Secondly, desensitisation to breathlessness. This is achieved by practising breath holding pauses where patients learn to experience breathlessness in a non-threatening way. Over the five weeks of training, this ability is honed so that when patients feel the first signs of breathlessness, they can remain calm and use slow breathing or other techniques to prevent symptoms worsening. Basically, they try to nip them in the bud. All the clinical trials so far have indicated that Buteco used alongside conventional management is safe. Patients in trials experienced an improvement in asthma symptoms without an increase in adverse effects such as exacerbations, A&E visits or hospital admissions. A new questionnaire for breathing pattern disorder has been developed by Dr Sarah Todd at the Royal Brompton Hospital. It's called the Brompton BPAT, which stands for Breathing Pattern Assessment Tool. The team retrospectively evaluated routinely collected data records of 150 adult patients who were referred with treatment refractory asthma. The 150 patients were found to fall into three groups. How many had asthma only? 54. How many had asthma and breathing pattern disorder? 63. That leaves 33 patients who didn't have asthma but were found to have breathing pattern disorder only. So over one fifth of these difficult to treat asthmatics didn't have asthma. I found that quite surprising. The BPAT is a snapshot of data and was designed to be used during a routine respiratory physiotherapy assessment to pick up a dysfunctional breathing pattern. The patient sits comfortably in a seat with a backrest for at least five minutes before assessment and it takes one minute to complete. I would suggest that it's not a good idea to tell the patient that you're assessing their breathing as they may change it. There are seven components, all of which should be assessed in a one minute block. Firstly, counting respiratory rate, breaths per minute. 12 breaths per minute or less is considered normal. 
observing whether breathing is diaphragmatic or upper chest or a mixture of the two. Continuous diaphragmatic breathing is considered normal. Listening for any breath sounds. This includes any type of wheeze, a stuffy blocked nose, fast noisy breathing or throat sounds. Inspiration sounds and expiration sounds are scored separately. The normal here is silence. Observing whether breathing is through the mouth or nose or a mixture of the two. Normal breathing at rest is continuous nose breathing. That is breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Are there signs of air hunger? Essentially a need to take a bigger breath such as yawning or sighing. Number seven, is breathing rhythmical and regular or is it erratic? Each component is given a score of zero, one or two. Zero is normal, two dysfunctional. This gives a total score between zero and 14. A score of four or over indicates a breathing pattern disorder. So in summary, Good breathing is 8 to 12 breaths per minute, diaphragmatic, silent, nasal, showing no signs of air hunger, regular and rhythmical. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this of interest.